Thanks to Brilliant for supporting my channel. Welcome back to another AI 101, the series where we learn about foundational concepts in machine learning and use tutorials to show you how to use them in real life. This month we'll be focusing on physics-informed neural networks, a topic that has recently seemed to caught fire in the machine learning community, and something that I only learned about recently from taking a class on it. As usual, we will start with an overview of how physics-informed neural networks work and then move on to a tutorial. And as usual, if there are topics that you'd like to see me cover on a future AI 101, you can let me know in the comments. Alright, so neural networks can be simply described as complex formulas that we optimize to learn the relationships between inputs, our training data, and outputs, the labels to our training data. And while past AI 101s have focused on the different types of formulas that we can use or different types of training data, one thing we haven't really talked about is how you actually optimize these formulas or what optimization even is. Given that neural networks are complex formulas, optimization aims to try to find the best weights that fit the training data. And this is typically done by minimizing a loss function. The loss function helps to describe how wrong a model's predictions are at any given moment of training. However, in addition to describing how far away a model's predictions are from the ground truth or the labels for the data, the loss function can also help to describe how the model might adjust its weights to get closer to the correct prediction. This is because the loss function is actually integral to how the model updates its weights, as most optimization methods use the gradient of the loss function to update weights via backpropagation. And if all of this sounds like gibberish to you, I'd highly recommend pausing this video and checking out my earlier AI 101 on how neural networks work. But as you might expect, different loss functions have different gradients, so your choice of loss function has an impact on how your model arrives at the correct weights for the correct prediction, if it does at all. Now, picking a loss function wasn't actually something that I really learned when I was initially learning machine learning. In fact, I'd say it's something that I didn't really learn how to do until somewhat recently. But it turns out it's pretty important because it can make a big difference into how efficiently your model learns and whether or not it arrives at the correct approximate solution at all. In fact, optimization methods could be its own video and it will likely be next month's AO 101 since it will tie in well with this one, but we'll soon see the level of impact that choosing a loss function can have. While most basic loss functions are pretty straightforward, either subtracting the model's prediction from the true label or using entropy, which is a measure of uncertainty. However, some tasks in machine learning look to model systems that have governing equations or formulas based on the laws of physics that replicate the activity of that system. And it turns out that we can use these governing equations to inform our loss function, given that the governing equation is the one that we're trying to get our model to learn. Now, you might be wondering, why don't we just use the governing equation and scrap the model altogether? Well, it turns out that these governing equations are often differential equations, which relate functions to their derivatives. And it's often difficult to solve these equations for a solution that would allow us to directly model the system. Fortunately for us, there are more ways of writing a loss function than just relying on the model's predictions itself. Instead, we might use the derivative of the complex formula learned by our model. So given that we have this differential equation that represents the system we'd like to get our model to learn, and given that we know that the solution to that equation is equal to the formula that we want our model to actually learn, we can make a loss function that looks like this and train a model that performs surprisingly well, surprisingly quickly. In fact, there was a recent preprint from Stanford that gained some media coverage where authors developed a physics-informed neural network to accurately model fluid dynamics. So now that we've discussed this in theory, let's see what this actually looks like in terms of code. So I know that we said that we were going to look at code, but for this video, I think we're actually going to look at some example code from a set of preprints that turned into one paper that came out in 2017 that kind of broke the ground on physics-informed neural networks and physics-informed deep learning. And the reason for that is because I figured out through developing a collab notebook for this that the explanation of how the optimization worked wasn't particularly intuitive and it would make a lot more sense if I had an optimization video up first to explain that to you. So instead, we're just going to look at this paper and then in the next AI 101 video, there'll be a much more in-depth explanation and a code demo for optimization that we can then apply to physics-informed neural networks. So. In this paper, they make use of a few examples of how you can use physics-informed neural networks, which I'll go through here. The first one is something called Berger's equation. It's essentially an equation that looks to model different phenomena in fluid dynamics, and so you don't need to know a ton about what it is, but we can see here that the equation is defined by these 
differential equations, which you can't really solve particularly easily, which is why it's actually helpful to have them here for the purposes of developing a model that might be able to get that more explicit solution. And so to do that, what we're trying to get to is a solution for u, which you can see up at the top. We have u, we have the derivative of u as it relates to t, the derivative of u as it relates to x, the second derivative of u as it relates to x. And to get to u of t and x, we're just going to make a neural network to represent that function. From there, the physics informed neural network that we're going to make will then take the information that we've learned from this differential equation and basically shape the neural network in that form so that we can use the information gained from this differential equation to improve our final network. And then lastly, as we talked about earlier in the video, we use a loss function. In this case, it's our mean squared error. But our mean squared error is informed by both the error of the neural network, which you can see here, as well as the error of the function that we're trying to actually get at. In effect, this mean squared error of f is the physics that is informed by our neural network, as you can see down here, and is what lets us actually get that extra information that we've been looking for. So as you can see, when you do this, your exact results, the actual solution to the equation versus the prediction from the model are pretty much the exact same thing. And as you can see, the training for this is pretty fast. So doing this took about 60 seconds on a single GPU card, which is not your average laptop, but when it comes to machine learning research, it's still pretty fast. From there, the paper looks at some other examples of solving other types of equations. So one of them is Schrodinger's equation, which is the wave equation. And essentially what they show here is the same type of analysis where we're using the information from these governing equations to help our network learn the correct parameters in order to actually model these phenomena. And as you can see here, we see similar things where the prediction and the actual thing that we're trying to find are like basically the same. With that, I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. And as always, you can let me know in the comments if there are other topics that you'd like to see me do on AO101 as well. And if you've gotten through this video and want to keep learning about differential equations, neural networks, and physics, you should start with Brilliant's courses on differential equations, neural networks, and physics. Brilliant is a website and app that makes learning accessible and fun. Their approach is based on problem solving and active learning. It's about seeing concepts visually and interacting with them, and then answering questions that get you to think. Their courses are laid out like a story, and are broken down into pieces so that you can tackle them a little bit at a time. There's no tests and no grades, just pick a course based on what you're interested in and get started. If you make a mistake, no big deal, just check out the explanations to find out more. You can learn at your own pace, and there's something for everyone, whether you want to brush up on the basics of algebra, learn programming, or learn about cutting-edge topics like neural networks. There's even some advanced stuff like differential equations if you want to keep working on the types of problems that we discussed in this video. To get started, go to brilliant.org jordan or click on the link in the description to sign up for free. Clicking on that link supports my channel and gives you access to an amazing library of courses, so please check them out. Otherwise, if you like this video, you can let me know by smashing the like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also check out the rest of the AI 101 series up here. You can follow my PhD life on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you on Monday. Bye!